In order to properly calculate convexity, I think we need to first understand duration properly. So let's go into an example where we calculate the Macaulay duration of a bond and talk about what that means and it implies for the way that the bond's price will change with interest rates. So I've got an example that I've mapped out here. This is a 10 year bond that pays interest just once per year at the end of each year and it currently has a yield to maturity of 5%. That means that in the market for bonds of comparable risk, investors are requiring a rate of return of 5%. This bond pays a coupon rate of 4%, and it has a total notional amount of $100. So with that information, we can find the cash flow for each period, which will just be the coupon rate times the notional amount. Then we can take these cash flows and we can find the present value of each cash flow. And that's quite simple. So for each one, we would just take that cash flow here, divide it by one plus the yield to maturity, and take it to the exponent of the period. So for the second year, for example, we just have to discount it back two years to get to the present value that it would be worth today. Um, and then once we have all these present values, we can sum them up to find the fair value of the bond. So once we sum all of these, we find the fair value of the bond is $92.28. So now here's where we calculate Macaulay duration. So for each of these present values of the cash flows, we need to find what percent of the total is that present value of the cash flow. So for year one, we're just going to take this present value here and divide it by the total value of the bond. And there we find that this contributes 4.13% to that present value. And we do that for all of them and we find most of this value is in this final cash flow here. And then once we have that, we're basically just going to take a weighted average of each of these percentages of the present value multiplied by the years into the future. So for this one here, we're just taking that uh, this 4.13% and we're multiplying by the period and then we just do that for all of them. And then we can sum them all. This is where the weighted average comes in. And we find that we have a Macaulay duration of 8.36. And what that means is that if we don't consider convexity, so we make this simple assumption, that if interest rates were to rise 1%, we would expect the price of our bond to fall by 8.36%. Whereas if interest rates were to fall, we would expect the price of our bond to rise by 8.36% because of the inverse relationship between interest rates and bond prices. Now, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the easier part of this video is over with, and we're going to dive into how can we calculate convexity in Excel and then graph it. So you can see I've already got the convexity number, and I'm going to walk you through how I came up with this, and we can just scroll down into this area. So here I've mapped out a bunch of different yield to maturities. We're going to be looking at the same bond with the same 10 years to maturity, the same yield to maturity, coupon rate, notional, all of that. So what I've done here is I have calculated the bond price at each of these yield to maturities, right? And I'm just using Excel's inbuilt uh, present value PV formula here. So this rate here is just going to be equal to that yield to maturity. The number of periods is just going to be equal to 10, and we'll lock that in. And then the payment is just going to be equal to that coupon rate times the notional amount. So it's going to be $4. And then the future value is just going to be equal to that notional amount of 100. And then we can just copy and paste this formula all the way down and we have the bond price for every single possible yield to maturity that I've included in here and so once we have all of those you'll see that they pretty much increment by 0.4 percent each time but I wanted to single out at that five percent which was the amount that we actually priced out up here so I added uh one uh, yield to maturity of 4.99%, so just 0.01% higher, and 1.01% lower at 5.01%. And I calculated the bond price at both of those amounts. So the first thing that we need to find is this dollar duration, which is the first derivative. And so at this 5%, it is simply going to be the amount that the bond's price would change 
So this 92.28 subtracted by the 92.35, so this was basically a fall of seven cents, divided by the amount that the interest rate decreased, so divided by that 0.01%. And so this is basically the rise over the run, which is the first derivative, and it's the dollar duration. And then we can do the same thing, but with that 5.01 versus 5%. And so it's the same exact formula. I simply just take this one and drag it down. And so we have both of these dollar durations. But now we need to find the dollar convexity, which is the second derivative. And that is the rate of change of the first derivative. And it's actually, you know, quite simple once you understand these two. We're just taking the rate of change of these two here in this numerator divided by the change in the yield to maturity here. And then we end up with that dollar convexity. And once we have dollar convexity, we can convert it back into convexity by just taking dollar convexity and dividing it by the fair price of that bond at the original 5%. And we come up with a convexity of 78.29. So that's the convexity that we will use. And then once we have that convexity, we can use this formula, right? Change in bond price. So this right here is going to give us the percentage change in price. So I want to first show you if we only included duration, if we only included duration, we would be looking at this original price, that 92.28 that we calculated up here. and then we could just simply use this formula that basically takes the change in the interest rate here and multiplies it by that C19, which is the duration, Macaulay duration value. And then we can add it one there. And so that gives us one plus the total percentage change that we expect and multiply it by E30. And E30 is that original price of the bond. And so then this tells us what we expect duration to be at any, or sorry, the bond price to be just based on duration at any of these yield to maturities. That's what this entire column is. And then if we graph that, we end up with this blue line here. And you can see duration is just a linear relationship it expects that bond prices would just simply move linearly based on the changes in interest rates, which is not actually accurate. There is some curvature in the actual relationship between interest rates and bond prices, and that is what convexity attempts to calculate. And so then we can use this formula. So this blue line here only includes that blue duration right there. But then if we include this orange part here, that is including the effects of convexity when taking into account what we expect the change in the bond price to be. So this, this convexity formula here is the same as the one we used in duration. It just adds another component, which is this plus one half times that convexity amount C20 right here times the change in the yield to maturity, the difference between this value and this value, and then we take that squared. And so this whole expression right here gives us the expected change in percentage based on duration and convexity, the expected change in percent of the bond price. And then we add that to one, and we can multiply that entire expression times the original bond price at 5% of 9.28 to come up with what would be our convexity and duration implied price for every single one of these yields maturities. And that's what we have in this column here. And so that's what we're actually mapping in this orange line, which shows the effects of that curvature of that relationship when we take into account that uh, second derivative. However, one thing I wanted to point out to you guys is that the convexity can change at different points in these different interest rates. So this convexity that I showed you here that we're assuming when we calculate all of these prices, this uh, 78.29 that I use up here and in all these calculations, see? 
Um, that is really just the convexity from uh from at the around the five percent mark, right? So when I took these formulas like this and I pasted them here, we're seeing the convexity is different at these lower interest rates, right? The convexity is higher, and then over here for this bond in particular, the conven the convexity is actually lower at these higher interest rates. So if now I include what should actually be the correct prices of the bond, I'm going to right click here, hit select data, and I've already got this included, so I'll check that box. So now this gray line here actually shows the correct bond prices. So when I just simplify and use only the convexity at this point in the bond, I'm not going to be totally correct in calculating the price. So it goes a little bit beyond that. If you guys are interested in the spreadsheet that I created in this video, check the link in the description. Thank you for watching. Please hit subscribe for more content just like this in the future. Thank you.